Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so I came to shoot a house uh, for a realtor, an agent that uh, I do a lot of homes for. And I figured that this would be a good time to do a video of my process. Simple process. You can find a, probably a thousand videos out there of people that do real estate uh, photography. And they, they all could have some different ways that they go about doing things. Uh, but there are some things that are kind of normal across the board, but some people may do flash. And if you want to do flash, I don't do that. I just bracket my photos. Um, but what I want to do is, is give you some tips on if you're like new to it, or you're thinking about getting into real estate photography, some things that could help you, uh, when you go shoot your first house. So this house right here that I'm in, you can see that there is no furniture at all. It's empty. So what I do typically, I have three steps that I automatically do. As soon as I walk through the door, I will make sure all these lights, like this right here, any light that you can find, I will make sure that's off. Also, what I want to do is make sure the fans turned off. You don't want fans on at all. Um, and then you want to make sure that the blinds are... Um, you want to make sure that they're up, make sure they're either open or up, but you want it consistent across the house. You want, if, if you're going to put them up, put all of them up. If you're not, just make sure that they're open. Um, that way you have the daylight coming in, but you can see the window. I prefer them to be up. That way you can see the outside because you'll see, as I mentioned earlier, you want to bracket your photos. I bracket mine. So usually when those windows involved, I will take, I don't know, sometimes four to five photos. So what you do is you go really like a couple stops underexposed, then um, a little bit more, maybe one stop more um, above that. Then you take one in the middle, then you take one slightly overexposed, like a stop overexposed, and then another stop above that. So you'll have one that, that appears to be blown out, but it's not. I will show you examples when I get back to the studio. I'll show you how you take those photos and we're going to put them all together. We'll combine them and then we'll spit it out into one photo and we'll edit that one photo to send to the client. But I will show you what I'm talking about when you want to bracket your photos. Now you can do it inside your camera, but I mean, I don't, all cameras are different how you set it up, but usually it only takes a couple buttons. You go into your menu and there's a, there's a um, place where you can change how you wanted your bracketed photos. What I would suggest on that is just research whatever camera that you're using, how to bracket photos, and a hundred videos will probably pop up. It's really easy. So you can do it that way. I prefer to do it manually. So what I do, pardon me for a second while I set this up, while I talk to you. So what I do is I will take the camera and um, put everything on manual. So I'll shoot at usually F8, F9, somewhere around there, because I want the whole picture to be um, obviously in focus. You want it sharp, right? And I'll shoot ISO 100, and then I'll bracket my photo. So I'll start as low as I can to where you can, um, everything is kind of, it'll look like a really dark photo. And then I'll slowly increase, you know, up to four or five photos. And then um, you do that in every single room. Now you will have a lot of photos at the end but when you dump it into Lightroom and you go to merge all those photos together, it creates one HDR image, which you will edit. That's what goes as a client. And again, once we get back, I'll show you my process um, for post-processing and then um, get you on your way. It's really simple. That's all you gotta do. I don't wanna show you every setup shot that I do. I just try to get as many angles as I can, good angles of everything. Uh, you can really never have too many photos, but this video would be 30 minutes long if I took you through the whole house. So like I said, I will show you what it looks like to have bracketed photos and um, get you on your way. So let's get back to the studio. Let's dump this card and uh, get into Lightroom. And uh, let me show you how it's, how it's done on the post-processing side. All right. See you in a few minutes. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom. You see all these photos that we've dumped in here um, of different exposures. So I'm picking this one where you can see that it's really underexposed. And then you have different exposure levels that take you to this point. Now, this is only three photos. You can take four or five, 
um, which can help sometimes. But and in this case, I only took three. So we're going to take this photo, these three photos, shift, click, make sure you have them, all the ones that you need selected. We'll hit control H. Now, this shows you what your HDR image is going to look like. You're going to hit merge and it's going to create it. You'll see it's making it up here and you'll see it come out right here. And this is the photo that you're going to edit. And this is my process of what I normally do on every photo to start out right out the gate. I'll drop the highlights, bring up the shadows. I'll come down to sharpening. Usually bring it up to about 50 or so. You, however you want, just don't, tweak it too much because it'll look kind of it, it won't look good bring the radius up bring the detail up and then i'll hit um option and then click on masking and then i'll bring it all the way up to 100 to start out with and you can see that the, the, all the white that's what's being sharpened so you don't want too much sharpened i just want the edges sharpened is all just it just adds a little extra pop to it and then I'll come down to transform. I'll hit constrain crop. And this works 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, but when it does it, you just tweak it a little bit to make sure that everything is upright and looking good. And in this case, I want to change the vertical line on here a little bit. And to me, that looks a little bit better. Now, the color looks pretty close. I will bring the exposure up a little bit more the agent that i'm doing these for likes really bright photos um and then i will hit this little button up here this is creating a mask i'll come up i'll hit object and select this window right here you don't have to be perfect it'll select it pretty well it's pretty good at, at finding exactly what you want i'll bring down the exposure a little bit it's still a little bit green for me so i'll bring up the red make it bring up the temp some and then i'll hit add object and you can you won't have to make any adjust it'll automatically make the adjustments based on what you just made for the for the last mask you did. And you'll see that it did it. If you stay inside the same mask, any object or whatever, whatever correction that you want to do, it'll automatically do it based on what you did previously in that same mask, if that makes sense. So you can see that it picked up a little bit here and a little bit right there. So all you want to do is hit subtract object, make this a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect come down hit that line and you'll see that it'll take it off and I'll hit subtract one more time hit object make the circle a bit bigger come across here where it picked it up and it'll take it out now that right there looks pretty good pretty solid I do see that this is a little bit yellow so what I'll come up here and do is create a new mask because this is a different section you don't want it to be like the previous mask based on those corrections so you want to make a separate mask a brand new one and what I'll do is I'll hit object and then I'll come in and I'll hit this area right here and it picked it up pretty good but that's okay we can make small adjustments in a second what I'll do is I'll bring that temperature down just a little bit to make it look a little bit cleaner not so yellow and it actually looks pretty good. Now what I would probably do is see what this does when you're coming down here. Maybe it'll pick this up pretty good. See what that looks like. So that's a little blue for me. So if you want, if you do want that in there, you would need to create a new mask. Come hit object. Let it pick that up, and then you'll just dial it back a little bit, not much, like something like that. <clears throat> so, and then I do see a little bit of blue in there. So I'll come back to the second mask. I'll hit object, 
Let's see if it can take that out right there. And it kind of fixes that some. So um, that right there is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, there's a lot of different lights in this house with, with different temperatures. So it makes it kind of tough, but you might have to tweak it a little bit, but those are the adjustments that I would make in this photo. That's how I would, I would do that. Um, and then you can close this out and make any other adjustments that you may need to make. So that is it. That is how I would do a photo when you're taking, when you're stacking the photos or bracketing the photos, you stack them together, you merge them, create your HDR photo, and then you just tweak it to however you like it. It's very simple. There's not much to it. Um, and if you would like to see other videos like this when it comes to real estate photography, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll probably be creating some more, but if you got something out of this video, please hit like because it always helps and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.